My name is Steve Killing. I'm the designer of the new K3 International 14. So in the K3, we really wanted to look at three particular areas that we thought needed improvement. Um, so one was a hull performance. Um, speed is always good. Um, the other is deck layout and efficiency of the deck. Uh, and the last is construction. Uh, building the 14s is quite challenging. Uh, so things we can do to make it easier and therefore cheaper are good. So in the hull modifications, we've put a little less rocker in the boat. Uh, 14 spend an incredible amount of time planing now, uh, so that helps that factor. So a little less rocker and a little wider at the back end. Uh, the other significant one is it's just a little bit fuller uh, right up at the bow. Um, so the bow a lot of the time is just at the water line, but when it does uh, get engaged in the water, we really need a fair bit of fullness up there. The guys at Object 2 have built a number of 14s in the last year and done a pretty phenomenal job both of construction and of sailing the boats. So they've done a number of iterations on their deck layout and uh, have got a system that they like a lot. So my job is simply to input small items that I think would be improvements um, and then also add in the versatility of the deck layout because not everybody that buys a boat is going to want to have exactly their uh, control system arrangement. So we've arranged other hard spots in the boat, uh, so significant structural spots where shivs or pulleys or extra lines can be moved to suit people's individual desires for that kind of layout. One of the prime costs in building a 14 is the labor cost, not the material cost. So we've tried to reduce the number of parts that are in the International 14. So we have three key parts. There's the hull, the deck, which fits inside that, and then the foredeck, which slots onto the front of the boat and they're all keyed and indexed, and then the daggerboard box actually locks the two together. So there's a lot of uh, location references when they're actually building the boat. And the J dimension, the dimension from the mast up to the forest day, so it's locked in with the fort deck itself. Um, so there's a lot of references to make the process of constructing the boat a little simpler. So the rudder gantry is something we developed on the C-Class boats. Uh, we just used a large diameter tube there instead of uh, a myriad of smaller struts to hold the rudder out the back of the boat. Uh, and from an assembly standpoint, uh, it's very simple. You just have this tube that drops into the recess in the deck tooling. Um, from a drag standpoint, if you actually do immerse that in the water, there's a lot less uh, drag. So at the front of the boat, we've got a bow tube which accepts the spinnaker pole. Uh, and this is a slightly smaller diameter than on most of the 14s and the pole itself is not tapered so when you pull it back into the hull uh, there's no opening there for water to come in so it's much drier and it's a lighter arrangement. On the foredeck we put a little more crown in than we normally would uh, so that the spinnaker hatch is actually angled in the direction the spinnaker is going so it's a little less friction there and I really like the object to uh, entrance to the spinnaker trough down below the cockpit. So we've maintained that, but we've flared the entrance to that so it's a much more gradual entry and it's easier for the spinnaker to get in.